Schönen Nachmittag, meine Damen und Herren. Zuerst möchte ich der Firma Schöps für die Einladung danken. Heute werde ich Ihnen einige Aspekte von Mikrofonhalterungen und Wünschen näher bringen, die die Kluft zwischen Wunsch und Wirklichkeit beleuchten. Dabei nehme ich einen sehr praktischen Zugang, der hoffentlich übliche Fragen beantworten kann. Leider werde ich Englisch sprechen. Mein Deutsch hat sich schon vor langer Zeit verabschiedet. Und bitte erwarten Sie keine Antwort auf die Frage, wo ist das nächste Klo? Then, antagonisms. Why? Why antagonisms? Because in uh, suspensions and also, of course, in windshields, we have so many parameters, criteria that are fighting together, and uh, some of them are very hard. Let's begin by something very simple, just a simple suspension with the symbolic isolators symbolic springs, two of them, just a fixed bar, and a boom. The microphone is basically a mass with a center of gravity here, and all the time the center of gravity is quite not in the middle. So here is a quite simple model of what could be uh, such a suspension. You have equivalent uh, springs, a mass, and what is very important also, it's kind of, of distance here between one of the isolators and the center of gravity. This uh, simple model can be uh, solved in different ways. Uh, here we have uh, the matrices of mass, the matrices of springs, and we have analytic solutions for that. We also use uh, finite element systems, which can solve virtually any kind of systems. And of course, we have uh, practicing. Uh, let's go on a little more complicated uh, case, where the microphone is a little longer, and uh, we add a mass. And then, uh, commonly, people think that we just add a mass. And that's false. I mean, if we had this uh, formula to solve, that would be very easy because um, the, the, the frequency, the value of the frequency is just uh, proportional to the square root of the inverse of the mass. So that is not so a problem. The main problem is the, the, the fact that the center of gravity goes really outside uh, the, the, the two springs. And this is the main, the main problem. So the, what I call the frequency tilting, everyone knows these uh, tiltings uh, on, on um, different kinds of uh, suspensions. So this frequency of the tilting goes low very easily. And what is crazy is that everyone would like that. I mean, to have a small microphones, to have a small suspensions, to have something completely in balance with the, the center of gravity completely in the front, and then physics becomes crazy. Would you like to have a car like that? Would you, would you imagine something working? <laughs> yes, that's the truth. It's uh, somehow something equivalent. Uh, here you are in the same, in a different scale, so uh, scaled as you can see things very easily. That's the proportion, the, the value here is the proportion between the acoustic section and the whole length of the microphone. So uh, you can easily imagine that this is very simple to, uh, to suspend, isolate, because a suspension is not there only to isolate, it's first there to suspend the microphone, so it's a comp an exact compromise. With, with that kind of microphone, it's very, very easy, very common, and uh, no problem at all. With this one, fortunately, this is very nice because we have a very large area here, so very easy to make uh, uh, widths between isolators and then able to hold large uh, loads. With this one, it begins to be a little more difficult, but it's okay, really. 
With this one, it begins to be tricky. This one, I don't have any good solution for that to make good work. And things to tend to be like that. I mean, with nobody at all. So, is it a challenge? I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe, but, well, it's more, much more um, a physical problem. Uh, just uh, to remind what we can find at the output of the microphone. So this is, uh, here we have very high amplitudes in uh, very low frequencies, so that creates uh, incredible signal. And then that's, uh, we can have so a very big wall here. That's what I call the expected sound, that's the sound of voices, two voices here, uh, standard booming. And uh, here is another wall. I mean, this is the wall of the expected sound. So as far as you keep those walls far away, you always have a very nice place here to put a sharp blade, so a sharp filter there to, to filter the sound. But if you do not make your suspension properly, then you, the risk is to get uh, a wall something like that. And then here, that becomes, or even it exists, walls, something like that. So uh, in this situation, it becomes impossible to filter, or let's say it would be a compromise. Here is the result when we, you apply to the signal uh, filter of the, the first order, second order, and the third order. And of course, the preference is on the third order that you keep all the expected sound and you really lower the, the low end. Let's go to windshields. We are in 1933 and the RKO, uh, production company, big company, is uh, producing uh, King Kong. And that was certainly at that time uh, the beginning of, uh, of windshields. I have a very rare document. It's a, a behind the scene document. It's quite short. Uh, I will show it to you. Anyway, we are in 1931, and this is the original drawing from the pattern from Mr. Spots. Mr. Spots was a part of the AKO company, and he had the requirements to make a windshield, of course, and that's what he draws. You have here an omnidirectional microphone, pressure microphone, that's the amplifier, and he designed uh, a cage, that shape, here. Uh, why? It's just because you have air flows here, so the idea was really to point out the wind uh, during the, the booming. It, uh, that's an uh, original uh, text. It's obvious that the microphone windshield shown um, must be at all times turned to point out into the wind. And now, let's imagine the same windshield with nowadays microphones. So that's the CMIT inside such a very nice windshield, for sure. I let you imagine the shape of this, but uh, um, uh, in the front of wind, that would be certainly a fantastic windshield. And nowadays, we are crazy. We are exactly doing the contrary. I mean, we are making vertical um, uh, windshields. Why do I, I call that vertical? It's because mainly the, the wind is a lateral component. So, and many of the time, this, uh, the, the wind uh, affects the windshields laterally. So that's the worst case, and that's what we are doing today. So, uh, Mr. Spots tells us that therefore, it's here, therefore this type of windshield is not satisfactory for use in gusty or uneven winds. And then we become to be in the turbulent winds, I would say. And so he also designed on the same pattern this surround cage, and 
that, that's very strange because it exactly looks like the RTF 3D uh, cage that you showed this morning. Um, and then we are in 1931. I cannot resist to show you this screen for earphones or soon receiving instruments patented in 1897. See a cage, small things, that's incredible. Thank you, Mr. Thorne. Now, I will show you uh, a little video that uh, makes you feel what we can uh, practically have a, um, a special view on the uh, proximity effect. Everyone knows uh, Omni, Omni microphones doesn't have this proximity effect. Uh, figure of eight, uh, super cardioid cardioids do have. And then I will show you, uh, I just tapped between my fingers, so virtually I create a sound very low, and especially in low frequencies. Um, I mean, uh, I uh, mostly create a, a little turbulence here, uh, practically something that has something to do with what happens in the surface of a windshield. Then you will show two sequences. One is with the Omni. Uh, uh, my fingers will be at 12 centimeters, 7 centimeters, 3 and 1. And then each time I will compensate the level so that the, the, the sound of uh, the, 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 the fingers will uh, remain constant. Then you will hear the modification in the, in the background. And keeping the values of amplifications, I will do exactly the same with the cardioid. Uh, just as an example uh, for a frequency of 30 hertz uh, and a radius of 5 centimeter, the amplification is plus 31 dB, so that's uh, really something um, uh, important. So let's listen to that. So what is very impressive is what what happened somewhere here. And as you know, there are so many windscreens that do not exceed this kind of of volume. So that really explain the problems we can have with uh, small winds, windscreens. That's beginning to to feel what can be uh, um, um, you know the, the the main sound that we hear on the outside of a windshield is uh, low frequencies. That's one of the reasons. Uh, let's see just a, a quick review of all these uh, parameters, which are very important. Here, the, the, the line here shows uh, the um, length. It's 8.5 meter. That's the, the length of uh, 40, 40 hertz wave. In comparison, you have uh, the length of a, a standard windshield, about 20, 40 centimeter. So that leads immediately that uh, this windshield behaves, acts as a, as a pressure chamber under 500 hertz. I mean, it's not completely a pressure chamber, of course not, because it is uh, really a porous, so, but the effect tends to be a pressure chamber. A comparison at 10K, we have this size, which is uh, 3.4 centimeter for the length, uh, for the wavelengths. And in that case, so for uh, the highest frequencies, so it, uh, the, it, the windshield behaves completely different. I mean, turbulences that uh, are created over the shield uh, are not heard. Uh, ex do not, it's, uh, are not heard the same way at all than the the lowest frequencies. About wind itself, um, we can talk for hours about that. But here is just a, a power spectrum of a wind sequence of 13 minutes, 
And that shows that most of the, the energy of the wind um, is on very low frequencies at 0.01 hertz up to 10 hertz, and at 10 hertz it loses a lot of energy. So even a turbulent wind is, has the maximum energy at very low frequencies. So locally, these very low frequencies can be uh, considered as local uh, just flows. That's another uh, diagram, interesting. We have uh, the wind speed here, and that's the turbulence. So uh, what it uh, says, and that's measurements, it says that as far as you uh, the wind speed, the, the natural wind speed is increased, then the, the ratio, the proportion of turbulence increases. So, what we have, and that, that's a melting pot, we can add so many words, uh, that kind. They, and there are so many effects inside a windshield. But um, amongst other, we have outside flows and turbulences, inside flows and turbulences. I mean, it's porous, so we have a certain level of uh, flows inside the windshield, and so that also creates turbulences, of course. We have uh, evanescent waves, that means if some turbulences are created over the layer of the windshield, uh, that can be quite low frequencies, but the size of the turbulence uh, is uh, really uh, lower than the wavelength, so it produces evanescent waves, and because of the proximity of the capsules, the, the reduced volume in some case, uh, this has something to do also with the, uh, what is um, uh, seen at the output of the microphone. We have regular waves, that means if uh, the, the, the turbulence frequency, I would say, local frequency, we have micro turbulences also on the layer of the windshields. So these micro turbulences can be seen as classical uh, acoustic sound sources. We have this uh, pressure chamber effect, or tends to be pressure chamber effects. That affects also the way uh, how the microphone uh, captures everything. Uh, and we, of course, first control the acoustics. I mean, the material is porous, the material can be thick. Uh, all these choices made for the wind are, have, of course, an effect for the what we expect, I mean the sound of a, of a source. Uh, and uh, a windshield is not there only to protect from wind, it's, it's a perfect balance between a wished acoustics, a wished quality, a wished transparency, and, and uh, also a wish for a wind protection. So, on my point of view, it should look something like that. I mean, it's a mess, and it's very difficult to know exactly what it is. Who can describe very precisely what kind of turbulences, what kind of flows, what kind of things are getting in a windshield? In in real world, we have several types of, um, of turbulences. Um, we have winds without any turbulence. Uh, so, um, I began to work with some uh, institute about that, but it's very difficult. So now we have, uh, we have of course, experiments. We can do, uh, let me just, uh, if, uh, no, okay. Um, we have experiments in real winds. We have experiments in uh, uh, classical um, wind machines. Uh, making some uh, turbulence. Uh, I had some very nice experience in the in the Sharps company, also, and that's uh, very nice. Uh, that was a pleasure to to make these kind of measurements. Uh, but I have a favorite, and I will tell you why after. So you now have um, a little two little videos that shows the the results of uh, what we did. So you can 
sea turbulence. It's uh, proximate to absolutely laminar winds. And so this is mainly a um, laminar wind test. And uh, why it is uh, my favorite? Because we can do that in simply a very quiet room. It doesn't produce any noise, so this is very silent. And uh, we can control things precisely. Uh, as I said, we also uh, made many tests in uh, turbulent situations, natural, controlled, etc. And the problem of turbulences is, is to control them because we don't know how, what we do. We know plenty of things, but in the real world, the, the turbulent situations are so different that I prefer to have the simplicity of these uh, laminar airflows. Um, something has to be proven. I have my idea. If a windshield is better in, uh, if being tested in the laminar wind conditions, would it be, would it be worse in a certain um, uh, turbulent conditions? I don't know. My feeling is, if you make a windshield that is better in laminar conditions, then it will be better also in turbulent conditions. That's another test uh, made in, and uh, the test has been made to uh, evaluate the, the presence inside the windshield of a too big microphone. The microphone is too long and we would have, uh, we would know the result of the, the wind test inside a, a too small windshield. Okay, so what, is, uh, what you can hear is something, the signal is really extremely nice, pure. This is about, uh, we have more than 90 dB um, uh, dynamic range, and this is under uh, protected conditions. Uh, the, the, um, what can I say? Yes, the, the thing is, on that, peculiar uh, sound you've heard, you have seen that the lateral wind is the worst one. And that's what I told you. Of course, if we made that kind of windshield with lateral winds, that's crazy. But uh, that's the worst case, so that's this case that has been to be considered first in the, in the, in the design. Just here is uh, uh, a test comparing in two uh, wind speeds. We have, uh, no, it's one wind speed, seven meters per second, but we have a larger volume and a smaller volume. So you can appreciate here the, the gap on different frequencies between the, the different conditions. And this is also true for, for highest frequency. We are here at 2K, 3K, 4K, and the result is significant. I mean, it's, uh, we can hear it, and it's very interesting. So, just to finish, uh, here is very symbolically uh, what could be a, a good windshield. I mean, it's enough small, enough light, don't forget that uh, this has to be handheld, so we are looking for um, something small, something light. But it's also enough large, considering wind and also handling noise. This has a suspended cage, so you have movements between the cage and the microphone. It can vibrate, it can, uh, you have resonances, uh, it moves, so if the, 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 the walls are too proximate to the, the capsule, that could be a problem. We have enough, enough space to put all the, 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 the suspensions, but we have something 
impossible. Let's go on this kind of situation, which is a well-known, and this is just a windscreen directly uh, plugged in the, in the microphone. So there is no movement, no resonance, nothing between the windscreen and the microphone. And the suspension that is somehow here is also a suspension for the windscreen. So this is okay, this is well known, this works. This, what I call the impossible size, what can be the impossible size is if you want to surround completely the microphone, but you want to do it the, the closest as possible to the microphone, then you will enter to an impossible world. You begin to have no space for all the suspensions. Uh, and of course, this movement between the, the shield, the walls, and the microphones, it becomes very close, so that becomes a night, nightmare. Uh, that's why we, we have requirements to, to make that kind of, of uh, size, of course. People say, I want something very close to the microphones. But if we want to achieve all these elements, and if we want to have a correct result, then we enter in an impossible world. So between that size and that size, something in between, that becomes very difficult. That's a challenge. So let's finish, just transition for my friend Florian, a souvenir from uh, 10 years ago, but thank you very much. We have plenty of time for questions. No time? No, plenty of time. Plenty. I think you still have a quarter of an hour. So, in time. Very nice. As the TGB. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> if, the, if it's the case that when you have a fixed windshield that's attached straight to the microphone. A fixed uh, wind windscreen, let's say. <coughs> so wind more, yes. Windscreen, yeah. Um, like from the picture, yeah. Yes, that one. here, this one. Yeah. Um, why exactly isn't, for example, the microphone then very hard attached to the cage and then suspend only the cage? That's no, 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 no. Oh, sorry, if you understood that, sorry. Uh, no, uh, what is clearly uh, done here is if you have a, a regular suspension on your microphone, you just put a windscreen and it's the same suspension for both, microphone and windscreen. But what is very important is the windscreen is rigidly attached to your microphone, then it's a single body, I would say. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I understood that. But my question was, like, when you imagine to, like, as you say, when the, when the windshield is rigidly attached to the microphone, why wouldn't you uh, put the whole windscreen around the microphone? Like, you, we all, I think we all know those little balls to put up of on course. the microphones. Yes. But why not attach the microphone inside a, a big cage, for example? So, so you wouldn't have to like, suspend the microphone in the small size one also, but only have to suspend the cage. Do you get yeah, my point? If you have the microphone in the Zephix fixed and you just have a suspension for the cage. No, yes, so That's something wouldn't be uh, isolated. Something wouldn't be isolated. You, you need to, to isolate both. So, okay. so in, in, in that situation, um, both microphone and windscreen are suspended exactly as it would have been a single microphone, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but one of the reasons that, uh, that works is because the windscreen is rigidly attached to the microphone, so that's a single body, and there is no relative movements between the screen and the microphone. Uh, but in, in that case, uh, um, you have movements. The, case, uh, the, the cage have, can have resonances, uh, it can be stimulated by, by the movements of boom, by the resonance of the boom, uh, the, the suspending device of the cage, 
has to be very small, and that becomes difficult. And then, then the isolation would be not nice, and because of the proximity of the acoustic section and the walls, then you enter in terrific problems. I mean, uh, uh, talking, just talking about handling noise, in that situation where the shield is bigger than this one, in that situation, the handling noise is much worse than this one. You understand? Yes. Fortunately, in, in, in that situation, the, um, the, the quality of the, the, the suspension, um, I mean handling noise, is, can be very nice. But in that, with that solution, it can become a nightmare because you have relative movements between the, the microphones and, and, the, and the walls. So this, this can create very hard uh, but, resonances and low frequencies. But when you rigidly attach the microphone inside the cage so that there cannot, cannot be any relative movement between microphone and the cage itself. Okay, so... And then just to send the cage, that wouldn't work? No, but, but okay. there is also another rule in suspensions. Is the thing you, are, you try to isolate has to be the most, uh, I mean, small as possible, the most rigid as possible. You see, if you try to suspend uh, a big bar like that, you will not succeed. Uh, as far as you exceed some, some 10, 15 centimeters, then you begin to have resonances everywhere. So in, in that kind, we can imagine to be in a 15, 18 centimeter between here, oh, sorry, between, between both parts. Oops, we don't want. Yes, Be between the front and the back, we can have approximately, we can imagine something very tight, about 15, 18 centimeters. So in that case, the, wind, the, the cage itself is enough big to have many resonances. So if you attach the microphone inside, we will have a mess of resonances, that's for sure. We can have a talk later on, on this point. More questions? I have a question, uh, Philippe. Do you uh, how much do you like um, very small and very lightweight microphones? What is the specific problem with them? Oh, uh, weight is not a problem at all. Weight is never a problem. You can adapt to weight very easily. It's just a ratio between the the spring you are entering in the system and the, and the mass you have. No, no. The the main problem is the unbalance. Yes, as I explained, the, 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 the mass itself is never a problem. It's the, uh, except if you have a microphone where there is a heavy load somewhere and a light load uh, at the other side, at the opposite side, that's a problem. But the, the mass by itself is never a problem. It can be very light. But the suspension, of course, has to adapt to that. It has to know the microphone before. It cannot have a general isolator for each microphone, oh, no, no, right? No, 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 that's absolutely impossible. We, we have so different situations, then uh, uh, we have to, to make a uh, um, uh, lot of different flexibilities to, to adapt to each situation. One question to make it clear, sir. <clears throat> if I'm looking at the top one where you say size is okay, Yes. So if, if you would, if, if I imagine to cover the whole microphone with a form or something like a windshield and have just enough space for a microphone holder, would that be okay? Uh, I, I don't understand exactly. You see, you, you have usually on the microphone just in the front. Just in the front, yes. So, but what if you do it the whole microphone? You mean put the whole microphone in a foam? In a foam, yeah. Yeah, okay. With a fluffy around. Okay. And then have in the back just a microphone holder. Just the plug. Just the plug. Then you, we are in, entering in the, in the very first um, situation. So I will just come back here. That's it. So, if we, if we do that, I mean, if, if I translate your, your, your sentence, that would be quite that. 
I mean, we have no, we have no place here at the back to, to put um, a holder. But I have seen a lot of these in, in LA, which they use for, for filming. Yes, okay, I mean, in that situation here, if you use very hard springs, you, your microphones and windscreen will be attached. It will be held, it, but it will be held. The problem is it will not be isolated properly. It, it's not hard spring. The, 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 uh, the microphone holder is kind of uh, um, isolated. So the microphone is in the holder, and there is something which is kind of isolated to the pole. Do you understand? So it's, it's kind of like, like you have it with the, with the uh, springs. It's a little bit like this. Well, I saw it, I, I just wonder. I mean, no. if, if, if it wouldn't work, why do they use that all the time? But we can find on the market every, uh, many suspension like that. I mean, uh, many manufacturers can sell you anything and, and claiming that it can work in that situation. It's just to say that Maybe it works in a certain way. It's just that it works much better in that situation. When, when things are balanced, it's much, much easier. And the, the compromise of isolation and the quality of the holding will be much better, that's all. So now, if you, if you go far and far on that situation, the compromise begins to be lower and lower, that's all. Well, you can do it. What does that mean? Uh, yes, I've seen that and it works, but what does that mean? It works. Are you happy with the holding? Are you happy with the suspension quality, with the isolation quality? That's the question. Okay. Um, another question. Um, what are the optimum points to attach the microphone itself inside um, the box? I mean. Uh, it seems to me that from, from your pictures here that it probably would be best if, the, if, if you could attach the microphone on both ends. But um, that will create some acoustic... Would that create acoustical problems if you, if you attached the microphone also on the sensitive end? Let, let's talk about... Are you talking about, about uh, this situation? Well... For example? Suppose, suppose you have a complete windshield, not one that you just attach on one A end. complete one. A complete one, it goes all around it. Okay. Let's go in... Let's see, this one. Exactly. You, you are, here you are uh, showing an attachment of just one spring in the middle of the microphone. Oh, it's a symbolic spring, of course. I know, of course. Um, but in reality, you would probably have two attachments uh, of the microphone. Yes, or, or three, yes, it exists. Or three, even. Yes. What is the optimum arrangement? Wouldn't it be optimum to have an attachment on both ends of the microphone? Yes, but... Because then always the gra center of gravity must be between them. Yes, of course. So uh, then we enter in the, in the complete world. I mean, uh, for, for microphones which are mainly unbalanced, with a very small end and very large acoustic section, uh, we generally put a clip directly on the slits. This has been done for years. Oh. So, uh, but that's for an uh, unbalanced microphone. If you have that size at the back of the microphone and that size of the acoustic section, I'm sorry, but you cannot do a proper job. Mm -hmm. You need to have one clip or one isolator at the back and one directly on the slits. Mm -hmm. um. How can that be made as unobtrusive acoustically as possible, just by making it small? Yes, 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 of course. The, yes, you can imagine uh, you try to achieve a clip very small, very uh, acoustically transparent, not too proximate to the membrane, and then it, it, goes, it goes like that. Uh, believe me, in a windshield you have so many acoustic compromises that I won't tell you. <laughs> so you're saying this attachment isn't creating the biggest problem, it's, it's a rather small one, in fact. So, sorry, you said... The, the attachment in front, you're saying uh, it's not the attachment that creates a big problem there. The problems are elsewhere, they are, they are bigger elsewhere. Uh, yeah, if you can afford to have an attachment on the, on the clip directly, that's, that's okay. The problem is that if you want to use that suspension outdoor, that's finished.
because it's impossible to put forms. And for years, people uh, put, uh, cut the form and put a half of the form in, in one side and a half of the form in the other side, but that's not a proper solution, okay. of course. Andreas? Yes. <clears throat> for um, recording setups like Florian did uh, and for atmospheric recording, sometimes, which I do, I'm still looking for a solution to uh, suspend the microphone in a horizontal way, because most of the suspensions are uh, developed to suspend the microphone in a vertical film style like position, and a dial for, like for dialogue recording. Um, but the suspension for horizontal placement is mostly weak in from nearly every every microphone suspension builder. So I would be very pleased to find something which suspends the microphone horizontally. And yeah, I have one old suspension from the 70s. I bought it used and it's still one of the best for horizontal positioning, but it's never, never been built anymore. So yeah, do you intend to develop something like this? Interesting because uh what has been the gap between the old side suspension with just two straight strings uh, on each isolators? That was one of the problem, is that the quality of the isolation was, uh, has something to do with the position of the microphone. It's exactly like, like, like you say. And this problem has been solved with wire-type uh, suspensions and you have the linearity of the, the spring is much better with that kind of uh, new isolator. So that's strange because normally the quality of the isolation is still the same if you have your mic vertically or horizontally. I would be very interested to have a, a test or just a listening test to appreciate this, uh, this, different if, uh, this difference if you have one. Well, um, I, yeah, well, I forgot to bring it with me. <laughs> no, no, yeah. will, ne you can record it meet, and send it to me, yes, of yeah, course. Yeah, next time we meet, I will show you. Maybe it's just an impression of mine, but... Yeah, vielen Dank. Thank you very much, Philippe. And also for you, as remembering Durlach, this time once more, this is a gin made in Durlach. Thank you very much again. I have it for 10 years, that's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.